Hi everyone, welcome back to the next part of the Laravel series. So, where are we currently? Currently we are, let me reload here, uh, on the page that while well, we get our posts, we can create posts, edit them, delete them and so on. We got these uh, like and dislike buttons and oh, nothing's happening here. That's not the best. So, um, maybe we should do something here that we can actually like and dislike posts. Um, I think it's fine if we are able to like this like our own posts, I'll leave that in, but yeah, the general functionality should be there. So in order to do this, um, there will be a couple of things to do. Let's go to the project. Uh, I'm in the dashboard view here, and I want to highlight one thing I already prepared, which is important because, um, yeah, I had to do it for, for this section here basically over this video, the next videos. Um, right now in your project you probably have var URL here at the bottom in the script tags of this dashboard for you. I changed this to URL edit and in the app.js file I oops, get rid of this. I also uh, changed it here. I'm passing URL edit, no longer URL. I'm doing this because soon we'll have multiple URLs for the like functionality as well as the added functionality here. Therefore, I had to, well, separate them or create individual variables, unique variables. Okay, so that's the first thing you have to do to set this up. And with that, we're, we're ready to go. Now, let's think about what, we're, what we want to achieve. I want to have the functionality where users can like or dislike a post and that is different to Facebook for example where you can only like or yeah nowadays also have another emotions but there is no minus one or dislike button you can only like things that will be different here we can like or dislike so we need a table which will store let's say the ID of the post which is liked or disliked the ID of the user who did this and as a third column well if it is a like or a dislike so let's say a boolean where one is a like and zero or false is a dislike so this will be the table we need and then we need to be able to well figure out if the user has actually already liked this and if he then clicks I don't like this anymore, we have to remove this like, but that is not the same as if he clicks, I dislike this, then we would have to remove the like or just change it into a dislike. So you see the difference there, I hope. So, okay, that is a bit complex, but we will be able to do it. Oh, also, I want to achieve all this again with Ajax calls. So that if I click on like or dislike here, I will not well send a request and reload the page here, but I will all do this in the background. I will send an Ajax request, and if this is successful, I will then interact with the DOM here and change it without reloading the page, like we did when editing a post. So let's start with well the migration files with the files or the, the database setup. I will create them with the artition command and as you can see I set up my um, my project here or I, my, my tables a few seconds ago before I started this video because of course I tried out everything I'm going to teach you here before and therefore had to roll back everything now. So first thing is I want to create a new model so make model which I will call like and I add hyphen m to also create the migration file. Okay, so now this works. And now in my migrations folder, I got this new file here. And I want to add three columns. The first is an integer, which holds, let's say, the user ID. So the user who liked or disliked. The next column is also an integer, but it will be the post ID. Oops lowercase i and the last thing will be as i said a boolean which says let's call it just like 
And if this is true, it is a like, and if it is false, it is a dislike. So if this is one way to do it, you could of, co of course also use this as a string where you actually write like or dislike or whatever. Just a way to determine if it is a like or dislike. So this is my migration file and I will run this right now, artisan migrate. So now this table is created or existent database. And then I have this like model file. Now here I want to set up all the relations. I have two relations because a like has, let's say, belongs to a post and belongs to a user. Each individual like or dislike is done by one user and by or and, and is well uh, meant or is attached to one post. So the first relation. I will name it user is which user gave this like or dislike. So here I will then return this and then belongs to because as I said this like belongs to one user. So app user is the model and the second relation is pretty much the same but now it's post and I have returned this belongs to and then I have well app post. So this is from the view of the like. Now let's go to the post model and define well the other view so to say. So here I have public function likes and now it's plural because one post can have multiple likes not only one. One like can only be attached to one post but one post can have multiple likes. So here I will return the oops, dollar sign. This has many app like. And I will just copy this because it's basically the same for the user. Here we will also have has many app likes. It's, it's the same function because one user can like multiple posts. So he can have multiple likes. Therefore, he has many likes, potentially at least. So this is how we set up the relations. So now we have the table in the database. We have the relations set up. And this is the first things, these are the first things I want to do in the backend. Now let's leave it like this for the moment and focus on the Ajax call. So to do this, I will go to my dashboard view here and I want to hook up these two links to events which are fired when I click on them basically. Therefore, I will give them CSS classes here, which I will just call like. Both will have this like class, so no like and dislike because both have to do with the liking action. So now this is like and now in my app.js file I will add a new well jQuery statement so to say a new event handle with jQuery where I will well kind of listen on all elements with a like CSS class and then on a click on such element I will execute this function here. And this function will pass, uh, well, the event. So here I then want to say console log and then just, uh, yeah, let's output the event, for example. Let me save this and reload this page. And now I want to open up my dev tools and click on like and dislike. And as you can see, we get two events here. Uh, which will hold all kind of information about the event, so on what we clicked and so on. So for example here, the target, which was this um, anchor with like in it. So that's, uh, yeah, that is how we listen to that event. So with that, I'm getting the event. Now I want to determine if we clicked on the like or dislike button. Now one thing, of course, would be to 
not use the same CSS class, but name this dislike and then listen to two different events by just adding, well, by just copying this and listening for, let's say, dislike here too. Would be one way. Now I think we get all the information we need and there again will be a couple of ways you can find out if you're clicking on like or dislike, but I will make it very easy here. I know that the like button is the very first of the two links here and dislike is the second. Therefore, we got this previous element sibling property on our event target. And I will just check if that is null then I know there is no previous element on a sibling level and then we have to be well on the like button because this element, this A, this anchor element doesn't have a previous sibling or a previous element sibling because it's the first element in this node, in this div element here. The dislike anchor tag on the opposite side has a previous element sibling, namely this anchor tag. So I will use this to find out on which I clicked. So I can just like, well, find it out like here, let's say I have a variable is like, and I will just check if event target previous element sibling is null if that is the case then i know it is like so then i have true otherwise i have false and then i can just output is like here so let me save this reload scroll to the bottom here or let's just clear the console like true dislike false so this works now of course i can as I'm already doing a boolean check here, simplify this and just remove the latter part. So now this is doing the same. Let me just prove that to you quick. So same result as before. So now I know if I have a like or a dislike event. Next thing is I want to send this Ajax request, right? Okay, one more thing before I do this, I will prevent the default for this event, that's important. And then I want to, well, send the Ajax request. So here I will use the jQuery Ajax function, which takes a JavaScript object to configure it. And oops, I will have not the data, the method first. This will be a post request. I will have a URL. I will have to see what we use there. And I will have some data. Now, what do I want to pass? Well, I want to pass if it is a like or dislike action we're taking here because like here with the event listener, in the back end we will use one single route and we will pass as a parameter if it is a like or dislike action. Therefore, I will well just pass a is like parameter here and I can just use is like the variable I created up here. Next thing is I will need the post ID so that I know which post was liked. Let's see how we get that. Uh, I'll just add three dots. And the token, and we already got that set up. In my dashboard down here, we get this token. Now that we're here, <laughs> I can use this URL here but this will not be the URL added, but URL like. And this should lead to the like route, which we haven't set up yet, but we will do so shortly. So this is my like URL, which I will use here as a URL. So URL like. Last thing is the post ID. Well, we had the same problem when editing the post. So all I do is I just copy that code here and reuse this to get the post ID. Because remember before in the edit, well, part, we were clicking on edit here and this is on the same level as the like links. It's just indented because of that if statement, but it's on the same level in the DOM. 
So therefore I can well use the same traversal so to say to get the post ID which is attached to the article element if you remember that from the specific video. So therefore I got this post ID here and I can just pass it. So now the HX call is configured and I will of course also have a done callback which should be executed because as I said I want to change the document without reloading the page and this will be done here. Change the page. So this is the basic setup for now. In the next video we will set up the route because currently this will throw an error because well this route this light route here is not set up. We'll do this in the next video and if you want to test it without an error by the way just replace it with edit for the moment and we will of course also take care about editing our document when we successfully liked or disliked it. See you in the next video. Bye.